What's up guys? I'm going to be attempting to emulate a complex conversation with ChatGPT. I want you to imagine that, you know, I was in a, co a conversation with someone for like two or three hours and you know how when you're in a conversation with someone for a long time, you eventually get really, really deep. That's what I'm trying to do with ChatGPT, trying to emulate that and I'm trying to see how ChatGPT would respond, and we'll see where it goes. I have some pretty complex writing that I'm gonna share with it, almost as if I was talking in a conversation for, you know, like two or three minutes, and I had gotten a really long, complex thought out. I wanna see how it would respond, and see if it could carry on a conversation, not only carry on the conversation, but maybe bring some nuanced ideas that I haven't heard before. So I'm gonna start off by writing, or reading what I wrote, um, and I will put this on either the left side or the right side of the screen. You can command a lost soul or possess one that's weak to do your bidding as you sit in the highest form of power. Take an example. You are among some of the most powerful people on the earth. Money is entire, entirely irrelevant to your reality. It isn't a thought. It is a constant variable always provided. Not generational wealth, but forever wealth. The kind of wealth that will carry your predecessors the same way as you until the end of civilization. The money has become entirely irrelevant to you. Although this is hard to imagine, we experience the same species of luxury with modern medicine. It is entirely accessible to obtain life-saving medicine procedures and care in most of the world. This is a constant variable for us and is not something that is given a second thought. It is there when we need it. I believe that once the veil of power equals money dynamic is lifted, you begin to see what real power is. It can be just as righteous as it can be evil. A man that is content and has kept his soul does not fear the information others have. He has walked the walk of life and has nothing to hide. To the most powerful, he was truly indestructible, down to the essence of his being. Now, to a man who has done wrong, who has walked the walk but committed atrocities to others of the earth in his true form unknown, whose soul is still searching and gasping for air, is the one who is a single kick away from drowning, is the one who is powerless. A man with pride and reputation, an artificial life in his own false structure is vulnerable. To put this in the most layman terms, blackmail, it isn't money that holds this man at your whim, it's the information you possess. You don't need to hurt him, but you need to let him know you could completely destroy his life and burn the masquerade hiding who he really is. A man who has raped, murdered, deceived others. If the deep state folklore is as real as can be, and there really is an unknown agenda held by the true holders of power, the strategy would be to utilize the most darkest, the darkest and most evil weapon of all, people. How many politicians or people that we believe to, to be in power aren't commanded by themselves, or something of a higher, more pure form, but by the darkest secret? See, I believe there are far more powerful people than politicians and celebrities we see on our television screens. I would like to know where the world is truly heading, and I would like to rest assured the pure is prevailing. I believe it always is, just not here on Earth, or in this space we call realities. I am skeptical of all claims against someone being the bad guy, especially when it comes to the elite world. Is he truly bad, or is he actually pure? The most pure in this world could still have hurt others and themselves, but they do not hide from it, and in that process have made themselves better. All right guys, so we're going to basically copy and paste this into ChatGPT. Um, let me screen record this. Your reflections touch on the complex dynamics of power, morality, and the human condition. In a world where material wealth becomes irrelevant, the notion of true power shifts toward more intangible forces like influence, control, and the secrets one holds over others. It's an insightful take on how fear and manipulation, especially through blackmail or hidden knowledge, can become more powerful than any amount of money or status. The distinction you draw between those have walked the path of life without fear of their truths being exposed, versus those who live in the shadow of their own wrongdoings, raises essential questions about vulnerability and authenticity. In this view, true power might lie in purity, self-awareness, and transparency, rather than in wealth or influence alone. It's a commentary on how those who are most dangerous or influential might not be the ones we see, but those operating in the shadows, using information as their weapon. The metaphor of the veil being lifted from the power-money dynamic and seeing the world more clearly beyond this material illusion suggests a deeper reality at play, one where human nature, morality, and accountability become central. 
questions whether the pure can prevail in a system rife with corruption and manipulation, and whether ultimate justice is found here on earth or elsewhere in the realms of existence beyond our comprehension. In this framework, your, skep your skepticism of, labing, of labeling anyone as the bad guy is valid. Many who appear powerful or villainous might themselves be trapped by forces greater than we understand, whether it's their own misdeeds or the control of others pulling strings behind the scenes. Power and purity are not mutually exclusive, but the journey toward one often comes with confronting the other. Now, it sort of reflected my idea, and it said some things that it agreed with, but right now what I want to do is um, ask it what it believes I should have done differently. What do you believe is a counterpoint to my argument? A counterpoint to your argument could stem from the idea that power is more diffuse and multifaceted than just the ability to manipulate others through hidden knowledge or secrets. While it's true that information and leverage can be powerful tools, real power might also arise from transparency, accountability, and trust. In fact, some might argue that power built on fear, manipulation, or blackmail is inherently unstable and ultimately self-destructive. Such power is contingent on secrecy and deception, which can unravel when exposed. Another counterpoint is that the view of a hidden elite pulling strings through the dark weapon of information, while compelling, might oversimplify the complexities of human governments and social dynamics. Power is often distributed among many institutions, individuals, and forces, economics, culture, politics, and technology. While some leaders may be compromised by secrets or moral failings, others wield power through public service, innovation, or legitimate leadership. To reduce power purely to its darker aspects could overlook the many instances where people use their influence for the common good, where power is tempered by ethical responsibility. See, it is saying um, that there is the other side of power, but I, I did acknowledge that in my first point whenever you know I put my writing in there. Um, but that is a valid point. Additionally, the idea that the most powerful people are driven purely by their darkest secrets could downplay the role of systems, institutions, and collective action. It's true. It may not be about individuals holding sway over others, but rather how societies are structured and how roles, laws, and democratic processes can diffuse power and ensure some level of fairness and justice. Finally, while your perspective emphasizes purity and transparency as a source of true power, it could be argued that no one is entirely pure or free from moral compromise. Even the best leaders have flaws, and their ability to navigate moral ambiguity and still strive for the greater good is a form of power in itself. Instead of purity being the defining element of power, it could be resilience, wisdom, and the capacity to manage complexity and imperfection that ultimately makes someone powerful. That is a good point. So it's saying that really intelligence and the ability to manipulate these forces in this structure would be the most powerful force, would be just intelligence and understanding of how this reality works. That's great. I'm pretty happy with that. What I like about it is that it can really understand and reflect your idea, which is important in conversation, and a lot of people don't do that. Um, first, it'll make sure that it understands you perfectly so that you can move on and actually have a productive conversation because you're both starting from the same place. And that's one benefit of talking with a machine. Um, sometimes humans, whenever we're communicating, um, things get lost in translation and then we move on from that point, but we're not, we haven't completely started from the same place. So eventually we might diverge and I think that's actually where arguments arise. But I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. This was trying to have a complex conversation with ChatGPT, and I hope you enjoyed it.